FM 89.9, The Business Station. I'm Caroline Owen. And I'm Ezra Zayed. Yeah, this evening we are going to be talking about the Obedient Wives Club. Oh, no, that's right. It's just a, a nice little light topic for uh, our listeners out there. Uh, yes, we will be uh, chatting and uh, addressing uh, the role of sex, uh, gender politics uh, and Islam. And of course in the studio today, uh, we have a committee member from the recently formed but infamous Obedient Wives Club, uh, Dr. Zina. Uh, Dr. Jamal Ludin, welcome. Uh, she'll be sharing with us her thoughts and perhaps clarify much of the headlines uh, that have been made. Uh, and of course also with us today are representatives from uh, Sister in Islam, uh, an advocacy group uh, which seeks to articulate women's rights in Islam, uh, which also fights for justice and equality for Muslim women. That's right. So representing Sisters in Islam today is a familiar name to all Malaysians um, uh, and needs a little introduction. Actually, Dr. Paduka Marina Mahathir, who is a member of the Board of uh, Directors of Sisters in Islam, as well as uh, Dr. Ahmad Farouk Musa, also from Sisters in Islam. Yeah. Can I correct that? Yeah, a little bit of And Dr. Farouk is from uh, Islamic Renaissance. Oh, yeah. right, okay. But also representing? Not at no, all? No, no. Not at all. All right, okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, wonderful. We will have, you know, three wonderful perspectives uh, for some vibrant discussions. Okay. All right, so um, let's start with, um, uh, let's start with uh, you, Doctor. Let's, let's start with uh, how the Obedient Wives Club uh, started and where it originated from, the whole idea. Um, seeing what is happening in public these days, there is a, a survey in the internet that says that every 15 minutes there is a divorce and every 17 minutes there is a baby being discarded. Um, members of the club, well initially before uh, it started, uh, a group of people from Global Ikhwan, um, comprising about uh, 1,000 ladies, we got together and thought if the basic unit was stable, then we could have um, out there in public once the unit, basic unit, the family unit is stable, then there will be less um, divorce and less um, children being discarded. Basically, that, that was the idea, to get back uh, into the right track, uh, start going back to the Quran and Sunnah, so that uh, you follow God's way, then everything will be right. And uh, the, the name of the club, obviously, uh, it's Club Tan Swami uh, that, uh, that we're referring to, and of course, the translation, I guess, is Obedient Wives Club. Is there any particular reason for the, uh, and how it was named uh, in terms of the, the approach and the branding of the organization? No, actually, that was the, the idea, actually. If we knew we used that term, then we get a reaction, and that was what we wanted. We wanted the public to be aware uh, of this. If you if we don't use that name, then there won't be this much excitement talking about this issue you know um, people said oh we don't have this club then you know who's going to put forward this issue to get it right okay all right so let's go with the word obedient then it was intentionally put in place that's what you just said uh, what would your definition of obedient be what well, obedient is, uh, is a de um, for a wife to be obedient to her husband is a decree from God I do not question why why I just accept it as a Muslim, I accept it. But it entails being entertaining to the husband, being um, uh, of service to the husband, um, and also being obedient, basically. Those are the three things. And is this the case of, um, you know, with regards to, um, you know, when folks join in with the obedient club, what can they, what can they see as the objectives uh, of the club? You've mentioned sort of what, uh, why it was formed and what it was in response to. Um, but in, in terms of its objectives, um, obviously, uh, is to address these social ills, but um, specifically? Well, basically, the, the intention is to invite the Muslim community, for those who want to, or wish to, to be obedient to Allah and Rasul, the Prophet. Because if you are obedient to Allah, automatically you will be obedient to your husband. Uh, that is the idea, actually. Uh, because this is... Um, from God's word, there are four things that a woman, you know, uh, a wife, actually, she can get into any heaven that she wish. That that will be evaluated is her salat, her fast, her puasa, the how well she carries herself, her self dignity, she covers her health, she brings herself well, and for how obedient she is to her husband. If she can perform these four, then Allah says enter any heaven that you wish, any doors to the heaven that you wish. So that is 
how this all came how about. How that came about. Dr. Faru, um, um, what is the, the perspective, or rather either as, an, as your individual or as the, um, uh, the organization of uh, Islamic Renaissance Fund, what is your response to uh, the, uh, the coming of, of, of this club? It's obviously grabbed a lot of headlines, and uh, what is your perspective on this? Well, before I, I uh, give my comments on that, uh, I think I uh, I think it's very important for me to explain that uh, what was mentioned just now about these four criteria being mentioned in Quran by God, uh, four criteria that we have, I should have to, for them to enter paradise uh, and to enter any um, what you call any dwells of paradise that you wanted to. Uh, you cannot find any of such verses in Quran, and this is what we call indoctrination. You know, something which is actually you can find, but people will say that it's, it's established in the Quran, but you cannot find such verses in the Quran. So, in other ways, that I mean, this this is basically the thing that people will try to do, to try in, to indoctrinate other people to believe in certain facts, in intangible things. Things that you cannot see, but you have to believe. Dr. Farouk, you know, on that subject, because obviously the uh, the term obedient uh, came to mind, and um, in discussions with um, you know various members of the public, uh, there is um, you know <coughs> a verse uh, that is quoted, uh, uh, Surah 4, uh, 34. Uh, men are the protectors. I quote: Men are the protectors and maintainers of women, because Allah has made one of them to excel the other, and because they spend from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard in the husband's absence what Allah ordered them to guard. I think that is often seen to be uh, a quote that uh, is used, um, you know, sort of to, uh, to propagate the, the argument that Dr. Zlina was just making. Now, obedience doesn't mean that you have to be a subservient to a man, or to obey them, or to, uh, to do things that are against uh, norms, you know? And what we see is that obedience is synonymous with uh, to be uh, acceptable, even though they're being uh, victimized at home. And uh, you see all this domestic violence is caused mainly because of this uh, misunderstanding of the word of being yourself. And I don't think that we should tolerate such uh, such thing. All right. Um, over to you, Dr. Paduka Marina. Sorry. Um, what are your thoughts on leaving in a wife's club? Well, uh, you know, I, I think this whole idea of obedience is, is very... Um, very confusing because uh, what does it actually mean? Is it completely unconditional? Uh, for instance, when I was working in HIV, for instance, um, there was all these women who were terribly afraid that they might get uh, infected by their husbands, uh, obviously through sex, and, and yet they were constantly being told that you cannot refuse your husband, you always have to say yes. Uh, because that's your duty as a wife, as an obedient wife. But surely, uh, in Islam, it doesn't ask you to harm yourself um, and harm the future generations as well. So there must be, it cannot be such an overwhelming thing. I mean, I, I have problems even if it's an overwhelming thing because obviously, you know, it, it, obedience always means that someone is less than the other and marriage should be an equal partnership. And, uh, you know, it's it, it mutually caring, mutual respect, and it's not one person is being ordered around by the other and therefore has to be all the time. Uh, Dr. Azir, uh, I mean, I think you uh, probably can sort of clarify, um, uh, especially in terms of, um, you know, where you, the perspective of the OWC in terms of uh, the role of obedience to the husband or, uh, and I guess the, the equality between two partners within a relationship or marriage. Um, the equality part. Um, I'd answer that first. Um, God made Adam first, and the uh, female was only from a fraction of the rib of Adam. To say that we are equal, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not true. Um, very much so. The prophet said in one of his hadiths, if God allowed it for a fellow human being to sujib, or to worship another human being, then he would say, uh, ask the wife to do so towards the husband. So basically, for a wife and a husband, the 
It's never any equal. It's not the same. It's not but, 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 so you are a lesser person than your husband? I do not mind admitting it because God has really? but, but You are yeah. a lesser person? What does a lesser person mean? But before I don't know, you tell me. Before we get to that, doesn't because as I mentioned, uh, sorry, uh, there is that verse, of course, all, all mm. men uh, are created equal. Men? Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but in Arabic, but uh, in Arabic, the term, the plural, uh, includes, even if there's one man in a crowd of women, the whole thing, uh, is, uh, the whole group is referred to in the masculine. No, then why is it that a female, says the Rasulullah, that you should? Do it. If, if God allowed it, what's your husband to say that? You know, is that a good hadith, Doctor? Doctor? I'm not too sure about whether it is authentic or not. We're different. But doesn't mean that we ought to be less. In a marriage, there should be a leader and there should be a follower. If it was just both are leaders, then that's what you have the problem these days. Really? Yes. You see, but how can you be a husband be a leader? If the wife is always telling him what to do, I don't know how a man can accept it. We, in public, they call it queen control. A lot of men don't agree, but that's what they succumb to. Being, you know, these men are nice men, but they have All to go home. I, so these days, the majority. I would say so. What about because all honestly, there won't be a divorce every 15 minutes. Well, who are the women who are being abused? Who are they being abused by? Are those nice men? Okay, but then you're not talking about 80% of the public being abused. This Quite is a, a small lot fraction. Though. Quite a okay. lot though. Have if you met any women who have been abused? Yes, I have patients. Right. And, all right. and their men, I, I is it their fault or is it their husband's fault? Are no. they being okay. disobedient wives? That's Both why they're men being and abused. women have to be obedient to God. Right. Okay? They have to be. All right? So if there is instances, it's not a hundred percent. If in physical abuse, you can, there are options for you. Like? You can have asked for divorce in certain cases. Like what cases? If, if the men abuse you. I'm not really? saying this obedience. But there are people who say, there are people who never say. ask, you see. In general, that's why we are, are that's why we were asking. Uh, is not is it a hundred percent? No. Okay. Under what circumstances don't you have to be obedient? Okay. Say an example. Okay. Um, when it comes to sexual intercourse, you can't go. Um, you can't sodomize your wife, and you can't have you know sexual intercourse when you're having your period. That's it. So in the what papers, if you don't feel like it? What if you don't feel like it? You still perform. Really? Yes. And you do that. Yes, because you see, I do it, but not for my husband. I love, I do it because I want God's redor, and that is different. Really? I would do, yes. If Even I if can't do this, like I would be able to die and give my life for Islam. Well, I would sorry. Be able to. <laughs> I, no. If I, if so I, even if, if you don't feel like it, if you yes. have a headache, you'd yes. say yes to your husband? Yes, I would. Because so what do I tell? the angels and the whole of the universe would lock up or condemn me until dawn. So that is what God So tell says. me, so tell me, what do I tell a woman mm -hmm. whose husband, you know, has been fooling around and has, you know, is probably a drug user and might be HIV positive, uh, but everyone says she m cannot say no to the husband. Do something. Like? Do something if you, you don't have to obey him when he's in, in that category. I'm not saying you would have to. But nobody will support that. Who says so? We before we move into I've been working with a lot. Dr. Farouk, well, what, uh, how do you sort of see, uh, you know, we're in the 21st century, well, what is the role uh, of women um, in a modern day society within the context of a family as a partner? Uh, and, you know, we've obviously progressed uh, a long way from, uh, you know, pre-Islamic times, we've gone through, uh, you know, the Enlightenment. And, well, where does this all play in into um, where we are today? Um, I see it, <coughs> even though al Quran. God has never put a woman in fear of them, okay? And belief that in the Holy Quran that it is mentioned that women separated from a fraction of a man, or from the rig of men, is totally uh, unfounded. You know, in the Quran it's never mentioned like that. This idea came from Deuteronomy, because you can find in Deuteronomy that... In the Bible. In the Bible, yeah, in Deuteronomy. But it's not mentioned in the Quran. Nowhere can you find in the Quran God says that women is created from the rib of Adam. Of Adam. Right. But specifically now, in terms of you know, what, what is the role uh, of, of women 
um, in the context of Islam? Similarly, I mean, the Quran always says that women should be uh, companion to men and men should be companion to women and each other should be helping, I mean, one, one should be helping the other to help to gain uh, uh, what you call as uh, 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 virtue of uh, and to try and and please God, okay? To try and attain uh, what you call as uh, uh, happiness in this world and in, in the hereafter. In your opinion, does it matter then who takes the leadership role, whether it's the husband or the wife? Now, even though the husband is a leader in the family, it doesn't mean that the wife doesn't have any say in the family itself. You know, it should be of mutual interest. It should be there. Yeah. It is it is not mainly a patriarchal. Yeah, not I mean what, yeah. you, what does leadership mean anyway? You know, is it personal means more? Is it what is it? I, I, I don't get it. But, but Marina, for example, um, uh, you know, Muslim Malays, you know, we, uh, they have compromised 60% uh, of the population. Um, um, yes. Um, and uh, made up of 82% uh, of total divorces in Malaysia. Uh, obviously, uh, the divorce rates um, over the years have uh, increased in, in, in the case of that. We, we keep finding what? Uh, obviously, uh, the OWC um, is taking ownership to some degree, whether we agree or not. Uh, to uh, respond to that. What what are, are the what are the reasons behind uh, such of these high rates and, and why do you, you know particularly why are there too many divorces? Well, especially well, obviously the stats show that especially towards uh, within the Malay Muslim community. Because there are too many marriages. <laughs> yes. No, it's simple as that because a lot of people are getting married when they are really not prepared for it. You know, um, people who are way too young uh, are getting married. You know, and they're not ready. They think. I mean, the trouble is, a lot of people think of it as a way of legitimizing sex. And so you're getting married just for that. Whereas marriage is a big responsibility. There's so many things um, that need to be worked out together. And, and most people just go in, you know, without thinking about all these things, despite all the pre-marriage courses, which I think are really, usually yeah. quite good. And actually, I was going to get to that. Does that mean that these pre-marital courses perhaps are not as effective as we think they are? Possibly. I mean, you know, I mean, there are a lot of people who shouldn't be getting married at all, really. Not yet, anyway. Uh, but we seem to be encouraging them. And, you know, I mean, at 15, you can get married. And nowadays, we have 10, 11, you know, child marriages. You know, is it any wonder that they get divorced later? No. no hold that thought. We'll be right back uh, to continue the discussion about the uh, Begin Wives Club in just a little bit. Right now, we're pausing for the news here in BFM. 89.9. Good evening, I am Caroline O. And I'm Ms. Rezai. Yes, uh, today we're talking about the Obedient Wives Club uh, together with uh, Datin Paduka Marina Mahathir representing Sisters in Islam, also Dr. Ahmad Farouk Musa of uh, the Islamic Renaissance Front, and uh, Dr. Azlina Dato Jamaluddin who is uh, from the Obedient Wives Club. Now, this one I'm uh, directing at you, Dr. Azlina. The mere existence of uh, the OWC uh, seems to have insulted uh, quite a few women, even though membership is strictly voluntary this we know, has been played out all over the press. Um, the fact is abolishing the club um, does narrow down the options that women uh, have. So do you think that there, there is a better way that uh, this can be dealt with? Well, actually, we invite those in the public who wish to follow the way of Allah and the Prophet. We're not forcing anything upon anybody. You know, this is a choice. You make your choices in this life for those who want to wish to follow the way, then you know, we have um, a club and you can seek uh, advice and guidance. And for those who don't wish to, it's a different issue altogether. So this is just for those who wish. But you, you did mention that it is uh, not just open, it is open to uh, Muslim men and women, is that right? Basically Muslim women actually, yes. but we do get the support from men. Right. Um, and, and what does that, that have to do in terms of the um, you know, the Global Equine Group uh, is, is behind you. How does that, um, obviously there will be those who are skeptic about the intentions uh, of this organization, saying that um, you know, it is uh, a sort of a male organization that uh, is, is behind this. Well, we have about a thousand premises worldwide. Uh, we're expanding in the Middle East. Jordan, I hear. Yeah, 
in Jordan, um, and Egypt, and um, in Saudi Arabia. So the fact that we have about 1,000 working women, you know, who all is, we're not asking women to stay at home. These are working women uh, with careers. We have dentists, lawyers, we have accountants. Um, all in favor of this. So it's actually, um, how do I put it? So you can have a career and you can also be obedient. You can have both. Now, um, obviously, the reason all of this came about, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, the high rate of divorce among Muslim couples um, and um, how many people are getting married these days. How exactly, I mean, what kind of method does, does the OWC um, employ to tackle this problem? How far do you actually think it will help? Well, if we see the husband as a leader in the house and the, the wife as a follower, it is much easier to actually... Um, to get the father to change than the leader, you know. Even if the leader is wrong? Um, and doesn't what know if I'm wrong. You see, okay, say a husband, he does not pray, all right? He doesn't pray, he doesn't fast. But that is his sins towards God. It's between him and God. But if the God says, for you as women, you obey your husband, even though he is in that state, he doesn't harm you, he doesn't prevent you from um, doing the salahs or uh, fasting, but you just uh, be obedient. Although, you know, you can say not to because he's not obedient to God, but if you do, then at some point, because God has, you know, magical ways, his hands is just magical, he works in other ways, you know, he gives you blessing in so many other ways. You have fine children, you have... Um, so you can ignore the fact that your husband isn't so great. So if you think of all these other blessings. Yes, I, I have see. so much to be thankful for. So if your husband is uh, like a useless drug addict who beats you up, you can ignore it because? No, you can ask. There are channels for it. It's not, it doesn't say in Islam you can't seek divorce or you can't seek refuge so exactly. somewhere. So maybe all these people are seeking refuge and exercising well, every their right in Islam. Well, the divorce is seeking refuge? There might be. I mean, we, I I'm don't know. I'm not saying whether... every uh, household there's a man beating his wife up. I mean, come on, be, be honest. How many percent of all the marriages here you're saying that the the husband is beating his wife up? You I take offense. Well, I don't think so. Okay, you tell me how many percent are not beating their wives up? I'd probably say maybe seventy to eighty percent. Based on? Based on the judgments, I, I I do ask my patients. I do see them, and they're all cheerful. Nobody comes in with a black eye or anything. Uh, maybe you see those and you, you think because you see a lot of these patients you would say that 80% of the men just beat their wives up. I mean, there's also, men, ask there's also me. mental abuse. And does that play a role? Uh, because obviously with uh, the Obedient Wives Club, um, they're, uh, rightly or wrongly uh, in, in terms of the preferring of that, um, uh, there has been an emphasis uh, on the role uh, that the wife plays, especially in terms uh, of their sexual relations, is I mean, is sex the silver bullet that will you know manage all of these social ills? Obviously, it can't be like that. Okay, come on. Ed. Okay, if a man marries a woman, it's basically to legitimize that. That's what she said, isn't it? Is that you? Are you a agreeing with me on that? If you need a companion, you find a friend. If you are you, are you agreeing with that? That old men marry women just to legitimize sex? Basically, yes. Really? What else? Okay. But surely, is, surely. That, is that if what you want God somebody wants to, to cook, you want somebody to look after you, you can find a maid. <gasps> okay? If you want somebody, all right, um, to I think you're hanging yourself here, doctors. You know? No. <laughs> what I'm saying that it's a big issue. God says, marry, and then you you have children. And multiply. Marry and marry multiply. multiply. So yes. marriage is only Part of that. Marriage wants a, a lot of his umma. Everybody knows. You know, you, he wants a lot of Muslims in this world. There are, already a lot, there are already a lot of Muslims in this world. Um, there are a lot of Muslims but, in this world. But do you, you mean to say that marriage is only about sex? No, it's not. You I just said, did. But, 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 what, you I just said, did. Part of it, I said. Sure. You, who wants to marry if you, you, know, you can't have sex with their wife? Of Come on, not. be honest, Ezra. Yeah. Would you marry someone if you didn't have sex? No, 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 right? But I think what we're trying to think what we're trying to think about. But is it the main part? You just said my that question is, my you question marry is, to legitimize sex. My question is, um, or, or the, the emphasis of sex um, plays a big part in, in what OWCS smells is. 
but is that the only? Will, will, are there other educational issues that you can um, sort of espouse yes, to them as well? Actually, in the club, we're teaching people come obey Allah, you know, and the Prophet. Basically, that is. Is that the God same as obeying? First. I'm confused here. Is that the same as obeying your husband? Yes, God's Why? decree is a woman should obey her husband. Where is so that? If you're Actually, where is? Yeah, God, in one of the verses he just mentioned. But well, you're listening, God. Dr. Farouk. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Farouk, what, what we have. As we just mentioned it. Just what we have, what we have here, is essentially, you know how uh, OWC is, is addressing the. Obviously, um, there are other approaches uh, to doing so. I mean, uh, and but but you know, what what are some of the alternative ways in which uh, these social ills can be addressed? Um, yeah, Pro <laughs> prostitution, for example. I mean, that was one of the things that came up um, when um, OWC hit hit the press. I mean, we're talking about prostitution and how um, I suppose men stray because uh, women perhaps are not um, are not enticing enough mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to their husbands. And I'm not sure that that's the reason. You know, prostitution. Well, there are many reasons. Prostitution <laughs> has existed since time immemorial, um, and you know, men stray because they think they can and they they, they want to. It's got nothing. I mean, look, there are lots of women who are absolutely brilliant wives, do everything. They, they help their husbands grow, help their business, mind the house, mind the kids, do everything. And they, the guys still do it. You know, how many cases have you had where men have died and at the funeral, the, the wife finds that there's a whole other family, you know? And, you know, and everything had looked hunky-dory, everyone thinks it's wonderful. I mean, I know so many people uh, who've, who've had this shock you know, <laughs> double shock. One, the husband dies, and two, they find that there's a whole other family he's, he's created, and then the, the, the ensuing, you know, fights over, over property and all that. So, you know, it's really, I, I don't know whether being the wonderful wife is um, and the answer to eradicating prostitution. Number one, I don't think you can eradicate prostitution any more than you can eradicate men. Um, and last, and all these sort of things. So the thing is, you know, I mean, just make it safer. But I think the issue is respect. You, you need to have respect with each, uh, for each other. You need to consult each other. You need to do things equally. I mean, really, I mean, is having to be a follower all the time, uh, to me, I think it's probably a cause of big stress and strain. I, mean, I don't think men know everything. I don't think they do, you know. For instance, let's like, say, okay, never mind all the sex and all that. But what about simple things like choosing a school for your kid? I mean, usually it's the wife that like does all the. I mean, and, and husband can't just come along and say, no, we I want him to go to that school, just like that. I mean, there must be consultation, surely, you know. And you can both present the case. Well, this school is good because of this. This school. I mean, you know, marriage is not just about sex. You're having to deal with. You know things like kids schooling and and um, you know food <laughs> the cost of food or the cost of running your house or you know kids schedule I mean ten million things that go into marriage and it's not just all about sex most of the time you're both too exhausted <laughs> from all the other stuff and you don't have time but you know what keeps it going is good communication and respect and being able to to laugh together and, and you know all these sorts of things. Dr. Varuk, um, you know, what is you know uh, OWC is putting itself out there uh, as an option uh, for Muslim women uh, to go to uh, you know when sort of problems arise and, and trying to find a solution uh, in their lives to many of their problems. What other channels um, or would you propose if uh, it is an alternative to OWC? No, as an alternative uh, to the OWC, uh, Muslim uh, women uh, who are looking for uh, answers and solutions to many of the, the social ills uh, in the country, what other channels are available to them? Oh, I think no, no, it's a good question. Well, I think they should understand their rights. They should understand that women also have rights. Do you feel that the members of Do you feel that members of WC um, have a skewed understanding? Of I, I have no idea. I mean, that's their understanding. Does that do, do you feel that the OW, members of the OWC, the Muslim women in the OWC, do you feel that uh, they have a, a, a very proper and, uh, and broad understanding of their rights? Yes, you only follow the Quran and the Sunnah. That is, you know, did, that, that is our law. Did feminism come into play at any point in time over the, over the course of, you know, trying to figure out what the objectives were? Or, or obviously, you know, we, um, 
living now in the 21st century, we've progressed a great deal into our values and our attitudes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think and many if you of just them follow the Quran and Sunnah, you never go wrong. You never go wrong. You know, uh, Islam is is a shumur. It's complete. It has all of the answers. So, you know, you go back and you look back, and you find the answers. But obviously, we've come across difficult situations, of which, um, you know, where, um, you know, we're looking at. Uh, situations where you know women are being abused and not having, uh, you know, the they feel that the under the understand their understanding of it, however correctly or wrongly, may feel that they uh, don't have uh, as many options uh, to them available. I mean, do do we not have an obligation to to reach out to them and, and make sure that they, um, are, you know, are given proper guidance? And not yes, like I said, obedience. You know, people get it that it's like the hundred percent. You know, there are channels. They are channels. I mean, if you have a husband who abuses you, they are channels. You can seek refuge, you can go to the court. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm not saying take it, you know, get hit every day. It's not that. It, you know, hasn't, it's like come, it hasn't come out very clearly, though. Uh, I, I do apologize, but that is not the intention. The intention is in most cases, there is discussion in the family. But in the end, if the husband decides this is the way to go, the wife says, okay. We'll even, if it's, even if it's not the wife's decision, Yes. Even because if it's not a wise decision but, but, the husband but, makes, okay, you have to follow? You see, really? In, but the, in, I guess the, the, question is, is the question is, when, you know, where is where's the line? Who's to say it's wise or not? It's normally the wise would say, because she wants her way, isn't it? The husband would say, isn't my decision wise? He can put it to you as well. He can say, am I stupid? Who's to say who's right? I mean, but surely, you, but uh, what are who's you to say who's right? But, yeah. sh but surely, if you're discussing something as simple as how much, uh, which car to buy, surely each of you has a point of view that yes, must right. be considered. Who's so say who's right or wrong? But what I'm so saying, if you want, to say if you that, say, let husband decide. So if he wants to buy a little sports car, and you feel that you need a bigger car because it's easier to drive the kids around, then you go for the little sports car because that's what he wants. Discuss it with him. I'm sure your husband, I'm sure anybody's husband is open to discussion. He is in the end, he says, okay, yeah, you make sense. Fine, go with it. There's nothing so, wrong with discussion. You, but, but if he says, I still want my sports car, then Dr. Zina, first, really, first even now. if it makes no sense at all. Dr. Zina. To him, it makes sense. But the rest, for the rest of the family, they have to suffer. Who because says, they buy another car. Wow, I mean, <laughs> what, ev you mean everybody has the money to buy two cars? <laughs> if he can afford, you said a sports car. If he can afford a sports car, he can afford a family But I think, car. but I think I very mean. much what, what, what <laughs> I don't know what I can't believe this if, conversation. If, if, if the case is, no, I can't believe you said that. that no, I can't believe you said that. You should listen to yourself. Ladies, ladies, <laughs> easy now. We have already shot in that. Sweating. But I think the point is, for example, um, if the husband, if the husband is the leader of, of, of the family, and you know he makes all the calls, he makes all the shots, he tells his wife, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to get me another wife. Will you support me in that decision? Because that is what is entitled as an obedient wife. Do you think that is acceptable?" Yes. But, but at what point in the discussion, well, as you said, you know, obviously the discussion and discourse that takes place, okay. surely at what point that the female feels that this is an abuse of uh, his position and abuse of. Uh, you know his role it's in the family. It's a life of the prophet. This is not. Well, I mean, Prophet Muhammad married many wives for various reasons. But he was married to one wife for twenty-five years. Absolutely. Yes, before Khadija. the decree came out to have more wives. Yeah, but I'm sorry. But, 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 but the decree. I'm sorry. But the decree. Because when he married her, no, she died. Right? Yes, when she died. No, but before he married her, the decree to say to the to have the four wives. It hasn't come about yet. But, the, the but before that, people could have lots and lots and lots of wives, much more than four. Dr. Yes. Farouk, do you want to weigh in on the four and wives? He didn't, no. And he didn't do that. But he had 11 wives. Dr. Farouk, your thoughts on, 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 <laughs> on, on, on this on the example that I've just mentioned? Yes, but for, for 25 years, he had only one. Right? Before that. Ladies, before we will Google and Wikipedia have. this. Uh, so in, but in but the custom in that, in that time uh, yes, was to have lots and lots of wives. wives. Much more than four. The wives. companions had four, both of them, more than one. Yes, so it was a way of life. It was a sunnah. Whatever the prophet did is a sunnah. Whatever yeah. he said, his behavior, so his way men, of life. So men should all go out. It's but at that time, they were having more than four. And Quran came to limit it up to four. But the real intention of Quran was that for every man to have only one wife. 
the best is still the best. The that's how you interpret it. Is but it's there, I'm yes, sorry, it's no, there in the that's Quran. Not, that's not the way but you, if you interpret the Quran. You it see? says, but if it you does not say yeah. marry one. It said marry two, three, or four. But if you can't be just, just marry one. That means a really weak one. Mean? You would have just one wife. What does a weak, mean? Oh, so you mean it a strong man has four wives? Yes, yeah, yeah, he would say, I want to marry another. What number wife are you? I'm the first. Uh, and are there several of them? Uh, we have three. Oh. So what did you do that, that warranted him taking another one? No, it's just a way of life that we wanted to practice. We wanted to practice the Quran and Sunnah. So, so you told him to I go would. out and get another three? No, it's one of the teachings. So I said, it's okay. And you felt nothing no, about it? No, because you see, I do it. Okay. I do it for, the, I let him do it for the love of God. It's not him. Do you understand that? There is, it, there is a difference. But the, the argument is, of course, Dr. Lina, is that they feel that uh, they're in a, you know, to use uh, the, the Quran and the Sunnah uh, in, in a position where they feel that at their convenience... Okay, polygamy, put it this way, polygamy is not for everyone. Oh, yeah, I guess All so. All right, I say. Okay, there comes a point in the life when a husband wants to, it's, you know, you allow it, but it's not for everyone. You know, he must be a good, responsible husband. He provides well, you know. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying, oh, everybody has to get married. No, I'm not saying that. It's not for everyone. But it has, if God has given that uh, option, and I, I believe that God has, you know, He knows us better. He made us. He is the creator. So I, I accept whatever He has, uh, you know, allowed us to do. I do not question. He knows better. He's God. I'm just his humble servant. I don't question God. Why? Why are you allowed to a man to have four wives if he wanted to? I don't. I accept it as it is. And I believe because when I accept it, everything is fine with us. Because he comes in turn, he gives us his blessing because you're doing it for me. You're doing something, a, sh a polygamy, shariat, one, which the West really condemns, and even Muslims don't like. But I said, for God, you God, I will do it for you, and I will prove that polygamy can be beautiful if done properly and in the ways of the Quran and Sunnah. That is my intention. Uh, uh, Dr. Zina, I think, uh, I mean, obviously the question is, is that, um, do you feel that that is not disingenuous on the, on the part of, of, of the husband? Because obviously there are many cases of abuse that, that take place. Is, do you feel that that argument holds water enough? Yes, that's why I said it is not for all men, you know. So which men are not allowed, should not have, should not be polygamous? Men really who, who don't, um, if, they, if they at home, the whole family unit, with one, he can't actually nurture or teach his wife to love God more than him, then how can he cope with two? Yes, exactly. I absolutely All agree right. with that. But yes, there I seems agree. to be plenty of. You see, in a marriage, the 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 leader is actually the man. He's supposed to nurture and educate his wife. You see, because he's going to answer to God in the afterlife. So what he's going to he have to do is to actually, you know, not let the wife see him as everything, but to see God as everything. When you have God, you have everything. It's to bring his wife to nurture and God, to love God more than him. You see, but it doesn't happen in this family, I have to say. That's why I say it's not for every man. But um, when a man goes to apply at the court to marry another one, mm -hmm. do, does anybody, you think that people should be checking whether he's the right type of guy to have... But men are naturally polygamous, you tell are me. Are they? Yeah. Dr. Farouk. <laughs> Dr. Farouk, I hear that you're naturally <laughs> polygamous. Dr. Farouk. Ezra, I hear that you're naturally polygamous. <laughs> well, I'm not so. <laughs> They might not be like um, wives, but they do have girlfriends. I mean, you look at, okay, I'm not saying anything, but in some communities, you see, they have mistresses. They have a wife, they have mistresses. It's well known to everybody. So men are really, you know, lustful, uncontrollable. Surely, uh, that doesn't mean, so. I mean, yeah, are, are we... <laughs> it's a very, I mean, it's a real put down of men, no? No, it's not. It's a on the one hand, you want way. to put them I up, but then on the other hand, you, you really are quite contemptuous of men. No, I'm not. Yes. The no, way you, you sound, it's not very... Nice. You know, that's why I said, what, what is wrong with them having a choice? The men, actually, if given a choice, who wouldn't want to? 
Don't be honest. Don't Who wouldn't that. want to? Um, but they are afraid. That was, what would they say? There are a lot of issues at hand, you know. But if you ask a man, would they be happy with one? If given the option that they can have many, do you think they would want one? Uh, ask ask the the man. Be honest. Can ask the you man. be just or not? Yes, it's that just. The same. So a man has to ask himself whether he can be just or not. If he can't be just, then why should he want to have another one? Final question, folks, because we're going to wrap this segment up as entertaining as this bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I have is obviously, you know, uh, discussion of sex and, and, and gender roles uh, obviously have come up quite a bit in this past uh, hour or so. Sex education, where do we stand uh, with regards to educating our youth, educating, um, you know, members of society with regards Absolutely to Absolutely, must do. Must do. Sex about, uh, and about the responsibility that's involved. Sex, not just, I mean, you know, there's so many issues now involved uh, for our kids that they need to understand. Dr. Farouk? Yeah, I think there's a role for sex education, especially uh, when we live in this kind of uh, society. Especially um, among married couples as well, I yes, again, among married couples. And Dr. Azia, what is, what is um, your stance on WC with so regards to sex education? I, I think it's good if you put it in a prop, uh, proper perspective. If you put God into it, you put religion into it, it's fine. A in proper perspective? Uh, like in you do you everything, business or otherwise, mm. everything is in the name of God. So if you do it with that intention and you relate it in, in terms of being in halal, the uh, halal relationship, then it's fine. Why is it, I don't understand, why is it God is being dragged into all the discussion of the God? Something that, that I cannot Muslim. comprehend. Because most of the we time are we are also quoting, Muslims. Yeah. 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 Like God from is just Quran not that, that do not exist in the Quran. Islam is a way of life. You should see him everywhere. No, of course. I mean, we don't argue that Islam is a way of life for Muslims. But of course, reason comes into play. We have our own, uh, you know, uh, you know, thinking mechanisms to decide what is right and wrong. So. Um, obviously, I think you know much of the debate is deciding whether you know where the lines go in terms of what is appropriate, and what is not, and where are the rights uh, entitled to all members of society. And you know this can go on for the next uh, hour or so, but obviously we might have to close up the office at some point. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much um, uh, with us today, uh, representing uh, Sisi Islam, Ms. Dr. Fatika Maria Mahave uh, from the Islamic Renaissance Front, uh, Dr. Ahmed Farid Musa, and of course we have uh, Dr. Azmi and Dr. Jamaluddin from. Uh, committee member of the Obedient Wives Club. Um, thank you very much, Eugene, for such an invigorating conversation. I know all our listeners uh, really enjoyed that, and uh, I think this is what uh, Good Radio is all about. So uh, we'll tune in uh, later to uh, for more news uh, here on BFM 89.9.